E-Flight Expo hier auf der Aero. Ähm, wir sehen, dass noch nicht allzu viele Leute da sind. Wir haben sehr viele Leute haben mir gesagt, sie sind sehr interessiert an dieser Präsentation. Das heißt, wir nehmen das auf und tun es ins Internet. Das heißt, wenn Sie einen sehr dringenden Termin haben, werden Sie trotzdem nichts verpassen. Es werden sicherlich noch einige Leute während der Präsentation hinzukommen. Und äh, ich denke, wir haben hier etwas zu zeigen, was wirklich äh, etwas ist, was die Zukunft der Messe hier und der General Aviation insgesamt sehr stark beeinflussen wird, weil es geht um elektrische Flugschulung und äh, das Team von rund um Ivo mit seinem Schweizer Händler und äh, Tine, der sehr stark an der Entwicklung des äh, Elektro Alpha beteiligt gewesen ist, äh, haben es geschafft, in der Schweiz ein System jetzt aufbauen zu können, dass das ist, von dem wir schon seit ungefähr, seitdem wir den ersten Elektroflieger gesehen haben, toll. Also ich übergebe jetzt äh, und hoffe, Neues zu erfahren. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Mark Orpato, I'm the Swiss representative for Pipistro. And, um, I will, in the next 20 minutes, I will talk a little bit about our Swiss e-flight concept. Uh, what is it all about? What do we try to do? Where are we? And what is the outlook in the near future? Um, already now, I would like to apologize for the very authentic video I will show you. It, uh, not to say it is a rather poor quality, however, I think it is good impression how this electric aircraft behave and uh, what we can expect. This video here has been made in uh, December in my at the factory of Pipistro. Um, as I said, poor quality was made by myself with my poor hand. We let him tax him.
So this was all uh, full power, full load. Now we will hear an overfly at uh, cruise speed. Okay, thank you. You see, this is not a toy, this is a real aircraft. And um, the mission clearly of this aircraft is uh, flight school. I will come to that. So, what is the concept? Um, we will bring 10 aircraft to Switzerland. Aircraft of the, of the type Pipistel Alpha Electro. All these aircraft are coupled with a solar plant, a solar plant capable of producing enough electricity to have an autarkic operation. Also, in that package are 10 fast charging units. This is important because, as I said, um, I believe the mission of that aircraft is clearly flight school, and with the charger, you are capable to charge the batteries within 45 minutes. Um, apart from the electric equipment, there will be also two aircraft of the type Pipster Alpha Trainer. This is because um, it was wished and defined that a pure electric um, training is not possible, but up to 90% can of uh, basic training can be done on the electric uh, Alpha and another 10% has, has to be concluded on the normal Rotax powered Alpha. So you also have the handling of a combustion engine. And uh, maybe you had all, uh, already the opportunity to try out the flight sim simulator at the main stand Pipistrel B3. Um, this is also part of this concept. We will have one um, uh, flight simulator in Equiance on my base. Um, Experience shows that um, together with the flight training on the real aircraft, flight simulator, um, progress is much better than only the aircraft. What is the target of our concept? Well, uh, we want to introduce the sustainable flight operation in Switzerland. We call this concept also white proof of concept. The idea is to gather 2,500 flight hours on this fleet of 10 aircraft to further develop the aircraft and to prove that it can be used in an ordinary flight school and also be used uh, on the way to get a PPL, LAPL, whatever license. Clearly, there is also the reduction of noise and emissions in general. As I said before, there is autarkic operation with the solar plant uh, in the package. And in general, also, we have to develop a legal framework for the e-flight, which is not existing today.
about the aircraft, you have seen it in the video, the PPCL Alpha Electro. This is an all-electric aircraft, two batteries with a total capacity of 21 kilowatt hours. This gives us a range of one hour of uh, real flight plus the legal reserve of 20 minutes. And the motor, it is an electric hub motor, a direct drive with a maximum power of 50 kilowatt. The propeller is specially designed by Pipistrel for the highest system efficiency possible. Also, all the electric equipment, the BMS battery management system and inverter are all Pipistrel internal design. For the weight, this is one reason why this aircraft cannot be operated in the ordinary ultra light class. The empty weight is 360 kilogram, mainly due to the batteries, which have a weight of 120 kilogram. So um, the max tech weight of 472 in the ultra light class is not suitable. Therefore, we apply certification in Switzerland with a max tech weight of 550 kilogram. Regarding speed, the most economic speed of this aircraft is 19 knots. It can go up to 120, but of course with 120 the range is not one hour anymore. The sole plant that goes together with the aircraft is designed in Switzerland. Um, it is tailored depending on the location where it is uh, installed. Depending on the irritation at that place, the panel inclination possible, and also the heading of the uh, solar panels. Here is to say, in an um, aerodrome environment, also the solar plant has to be accepted by the local authorities. This is mainly due to glare, possible glare on solar panels and um, safety for pilots. Um, the prototype at my place in Equinox Fribourg will have the, size, the surface size of 60 square meter with a calculated delivery of 11 kilowatt peak, which means uh, about 11,000 kilowatt hours per year. And this provides approximately 500 flight hours on the Alpha Electro aircraft. Um, also in the system there are two wall power packs, so the, the energy produced by the panels go not directly into the aircraft but they go into storage separate batteries in the hangar and from there the aircraft will be charged with the uh, high rate charging unit. This uh, charging unit, as I said before, is capable of recharging the batteries within 45 minutes. It is not only a pure charger, it is also is also surveying health and the status of the batteries and also especially in cold or hot weather conditions it is conditioning the batteries before charging. Here to say you cannot use a, even though the plug may be familiar to some of you you cannot use just an ordinary charger you have to use the pipistrel design. This is a picture of my place in Fribourg some of you might know um, here we will install the first uh, whole system prototype in June this year. The call sign of the Alpha Electro will be Hotel Bravo Sierra Alpha Alpha. You can see this also at the stand A in the A7 over there. The solar plant installation is in progress right now. I already mentioned we need approval from FOCA. And foreseen next event in Fribourg Equions is end of June. We will have um, a warming party for the system and for the people interested. Some of you might ask, why do you do this in Switzerland? It is chosen by Pipistro. Why? First of all, Switzerland is a very small market. It is easy to manage and overuse. Also, the fleet of 10 aircraft is rather small, and in case we need, we have the possibility to, to do things. Also, Switzerland, as you all know, is very versatile geography. We have, we have mountain, valley, cold, hot, wind, thermics, rain, snow, we have everything. Maybe not so Also, what is impressive for the small country, we have more than 80 flight schools. Um, approved training organizations and registered facilities. So this means 
we have good chance to bring the ten aircraft to uh, to a flight school one or the other. Also, what you must know from Switzerland, we have a very supportive government. As you know, we vote about everything, and we soon in May will vote about the energy strategy 2050 in Switzerland. And uh, this system, this aircraft, suits perfectly the ideas the Swiss want to go. Uh, last but not least, um, I think we have one of, if not the most experienced aviation authorities regarding electric flight. This, at this moment, also a very warm welcome to Head of uh, Design and Development, Mr. Paolo Salvatera from Swiss FOCA. Thank you for coming. Uh, we had some um, very well-known projects in the past. All of you might know Solar Impulse, two aircraft, all electric, with so all with solar energy surrounding the world. We have in the whole A7 another two projects. One is the Volaris, one is H55, both from Switzerland. So I believe our authority is very well prepared. The role of FOCA. Um, this idea grew since uh, basically the era last year. Contact with clients uh, made up the, the concept and uh, finally we applied for certification last December at, in Switzerland at FOCA. The, um, several meetings and uh, documents have been prepared and by March this year FOCA in general accepted the project. The work now, as you can imagine, all the topics have to be applied and defined. And uh, the most important thing is, as there is no existing regulation today, I call it it's a creation of a legal framework that has to be done between Pipistrel, FOCA, EASA, myself a little, what I can help, and so on. Um, in general, it is not only certification of an aircraft, but it is a certification of the system e-flight. I will come to that. Um, very important also for us is the link to EASA. Switzerland, as a member state of EASA, has very close cooperation. And uh, as we can feel, it is really also supportive and uh, good uh, yeah, good cooperation between FOCA and the yeah, so. What have to be considered? So technical is obvious. It is an aircraft that has to be certified. It is a structure, it is a propulsion unit, it is flight characteristics, all we know from every aircraft. Maintenance is somewhat new because electric flying is not existing, so the questions will be what skills a mechanic must have, what license does he have to sign off, um, maintenance program clearly PPSTL side. Also to mention maybe here, as we, as you might know in Switzerland, we don't have a ultra light class. We have an eco light class which is similar, however, when it comes to uh, continuous airworthiness, it is much more regulated than the ultra light class, so also here for this project with the with the e-flight, it is foreseen that the e-flight are maintained by approved organization by a CAMO, which is also locally in Equions we have a CAMO plus who can take care of the whole fleet. Envir environmentalist may be the most easiest here, because as you have heard in the video, it is there is no pollution. And when it comes to operation, this is also a very tricky topic because not, uh, today it is not existing. We don't have any license saying uh, single engine electric, and we don't have any flight instructors that really have a, a way to um, instruct this, and there's no syllabus, and etc. So, also here the, the framework has to be created. Maybe I would like to, to say at this place. Coming back to Ecolite in Switzerland, I said there is no ultralight class. Ecolite flying is very close to the normal pop entity single engine business, the normal EASA licenses. Hours flown on an Ecolite can be counted for the license, and 
even you can do basic training on an Ecolite in Switzerland, and this leads to the single engine piston license, to a um, PBL or Lapel or whatever is desired. So we don't have this ultralight license. And for this project here, for this concept, it is very important that also this aircraft leads to a normal license, let's say. Because, as I said before, the mission is flight training. Flight schools are willing to operate this sustainable aircraft, but, of course, only if it also leads to the corresponding licenses. So, in the concept, what do we offer to the flight schools? Basically, uh, Alpine Airplanes would like to have the fleet by themselves. So Alpine Airplay is looking for finance, buys the fleet, keeps it under in the register under Alpine Airplanes. Then what we are going to do is a bed lease at lowest cost possible. I will come to the cost. Um, this gives the, us the opportunity that we have basically everything in hand. We have maintenance and repairs we will do at our common in Equivance or together with PP Australian Night Officer, of course. Endurance. Already today, Alpine Airplanes has a pool of endurance, so I can put in aircraft whenever I want, take them out. And this gives also an advantage if I have every, all the aircraft together. And um, what is also very important for flight schools, we will be prepared, we will have spare aircraft in Equivance. Uh, in case there is some maintenance or even repairs or something, I can exchange the aircraft. This means the flight school will have um, the guarantee that they have continuously an aircraft available for training. Uh, what do I ask from the partner flight schools? As I said before, the target is to gather 2,500 flight hours. Means also that each the, the aircraft should be flown. I'm asking for 250 hours per year of operation. Also, what we want is a monthly reporting about occurrences, findings, happenings, uh, really to survey the aircraft and in case it is necessary also to, to do some development. Then, the aircraft should not be let outside. I ask for a hunger provision and also the roof should be uh, strong enough to support the installation of the solar plant. Where are we today? Um, as I said before, we will have aircraft soon in Switzerland. We have three flight schools confirmed today, participating in, at the project. Um, next to the aircraft we have four charging stations. This is mainly due to one school wants to have two different locations because they operate in between very often. And uh, only the last few days, another two potential flight schools very much interested might be part of the project soon. The outlook, as I said in the beginning, we will bring 10 aircraft to Switzerland. We want to have 10 flight schools ideally evenly distributed over the Swiss country. Also, that we have a network of charging stations. Um, yeah, I believe with 10 aircraft we can basically fly in all Switzerland, as we are not that big. Very important to the project, as I said in the financing, um, we have the possibility in Switzerland, I believe, that we get a lot of sponsoring for such a project. Ideally, the aircraft will be paid by sponsoring and given away for very low cost. Meaning the cost of operation for the flight schools will be very low and in the end also for the pilot students the cost to rent the aircraft is also low. Uh, next line, yeah, the wet lease. Uh, depending on the sponsors we really have in the end, I believe it will be a very good opportunity for the flight schools. Uh, meanwhile, certification work is ongoing. Of course, this will not be today and tomorrow, but however, it is a wide proof of concept. We are not blocked, we do not wait. We will fly the aircraft in Switzerland and we will develop the legal framework, what is necessary, and we will achieve 
um, sooner or later certification of the aircraft. Meanwhile, they will fly on a permit to fly. Yeah, wanted. I said three, three confirmed, two potential, nearly confirmed, five missing. So I beg for every flight school interested, send me an email, contact me, we will discuss. And also keep in mind we have all the time four PPSL aircraft in AQVOs. Demo flights are possible anytime, just call. I can also come to your airfield and we, you will have the feeling how PPSL is flying. So thank you for coming again and I'm at the end already. Thanks. Thank you again. Uh, thank you again. Um, perhaps uh, we will manage some questions and answers uh, here. So, if anybody of you has a question, I will come to you with the microphone, and uh, you can ask the questions. While you think of your question, perhaps I have some uh, additional things to say. This is very, very new because I. In the, when I was in the final to preparing our magazine for the show with all the news of the show, Ivo called me up and it was just we could get it in the magazine and we just could get this in the, into the program. That's why perhaps it wasn't, wasn't also announced as widely. But tell your friends about it when you listen about it. We have some basic information on this printed uh, and online version in English, uh, German, and Chinese, if some of you is uh, Chinese speaking. I think, and I have a question on this to Ivo, as there is no question up to now in the podium. Um, this is a thing which you start in Switzerland, we heard why, but we think it's really something which is a global thing. Pipistrel is a company which sells their aircraft in a lot of other countries, so is your idea to having a similar system in other countries, perhaps Germany? <coughs> well, the concept uh, can be, let's say, uh, applied everywhere. Uh, what is important is that uh, the legal base is made first. Between us, we have uh, Michael Coates, uh, our distributor from Australia, where our aircraft is already certified in LSA category and the PPL uh, training is legal already. So uh, I'm quite sure that after uh, Switzerland, some other countries uh, will follow uh, the progress and will accept uh, the reality of the electric flight also in lower categories than CH23. Uh, in Europe, you know, there is a battle these days, these weeks, these months, uh, what to do with the Annex 2 or new Annex 1 uh, for the maximum takeoff weight, which uh, should allow also new technologies like electric or hybrid propulsion SAS uh, I must uh, say a big thanks to our uh, Swiss distributor because uh, he is the first one uh, really doing something uh, also somewhere where we were sure this can, cannot be possible. And uh, I, I know that uh, uh, FOCA, uh, or let's say Switzerland, uh, declared uh, itself like an eco country, also the ultralight category there is uh, eco light. Uh, so uh, if the authorities support uh, such program, then everything is possible. Uh, in Europe, uh, I'm quite sure something must change. I'm very happy that uh, in this moment joined us uh, Mr. Loise Peterle, member of European Parliament, who is also a big promoter uh, to, uh, and motivator uh, to increase the weight, to increase the safety and to allow new technologies. Uh, maybe uh, at this stage, I would like to ask also our director from uh, our R&D uh, and uh, the guy who is, uh, let's say, working on the certifications and he knows much more in details 
where the certification, uh, let's say, in this moment in different countries is, uh, Tine Tomasic. Uh, I'm quite sure anyway that uh, nobody will block the process uh, and uh, sooner or later uh, we will uh, be able to leave the atmosphere uh, to our children's in the way, or let's say similar, we got it <coughs> from our parents. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity, Ivo. Um, I would like to point out that what we are seeing presented today is a really big deal. Uh, it's a really big deal for the complete community, because for the first time ever, we are not talking about certification of electric aeroplanes. We are talking about certification about electric flight systems or ecosystems. So how does one do it in an organized systemic way? With pilot licensing, with maintenance, with experience management, with the infrastructure requirements that come along. So clearly electric flying is a new way of flying. It's not a new aeroplane type only. And for the first time, with the huge support of FOCA, we have the opportunity to explore it in an organized, open way. So this is why I see it as a huge deal, because it spans beyond the certification of electric aeroplanes and will provide an invaluable feedback to everyone who is trying to enter the field of electric flight. We see this in this opportunity at the Expo many projects, some more mature, others less mature. But having the aeroplane safe and certified with any principle, be it ASTM LSA, be it as an Ecolite, be it as a future Annex 2, this is only the first enabling step. What Mark is doing in Switzerland with our support spans much, much wider than just certifying the aeroplane and releasing it into the hands of somebody to enjoy it. So I think that the project itself will resonate not only for years to come, but for decades to come. And uh, I'm really happy to be working with FOCA on this opportunity since they showed interest in a truly systemic approach, which is the only way to promote safety and to ensure safety in this sensitive time for electric flight. Since every incident, desired or undesired, will leave a mark and may poison the well for the rest. And we all have to be responsible, manufacturers, certification agencies and users in the end to keep the motivation of flying in clean ways as high as it has risen until now. So my applause to Mark for his effort, my big thanks to FOCA and everybody who is contrib contributing to the project. So this will go a long way and Switzerland is only the beginning. Thank you. Thank you, Dine. Um, we have the first question from the podium, and I pass on. Thank you. This is Marco Rizzato from University of Stuttgart. Um, I would like to know uh, what you expect uh, the reduction in uh, the operating costs for flight hour for the Alpha Electro compared to similar aircraft, and also uh, how much do you expect the, comp the whole uh, flight training for, uh, for example, LAPL, uh, the, the whole training cost to be reduced. Yeah, so, first of all, what is a similar type aeroplane? Right? So we have this sibling concept, the Alpha and the Alpha Electro. When you compare the two and realizing the Alpha trainer is a very economic aeroplane to fly to begin with, the Electro is still 30% cheaper to operate. When you compare this to a typical aeroplane used in this class for training, like a light sport or an old Cessna or an old Piper 38, for example, you are approaching half the cost. So there is a significant merit to that. However, the cost is not the only parameter which should be considered when one is talking modern ways of, of flying. Um, so it is always also the broader impact to the community, to the technology, and basically also bringing people into aviation which otherwise would not be motivated to fly dirty, smelly, old technology aeroplanes. Right? If you want to motivate the younger generation, and you tell them you have to train on a Piper Tomahawk produced in 1962, it's not cool. It will not produce motivation for people to become pilots. And because we all like companies without advertising like Brian Air, who offer cheap flights, they will need pilots for the 
times to come, ever more pilots. So these pilots will have to be brought up somewhere and interest in them becoming pilots has to be supported not only by the cost but also by other motivating factors, perhaps through technology. Absolutely, halving the price effectively is a big motivator. So concerning the price, which is another question which I have on the uh, technology, as this is very new now. So we don't know, for example, uh, their batteries, how long would last the batteries. So how many recharges, how many hours you can get out of a battery, because if I would buy a system like this, I have to know uh, how, what is the endurance of the, of the aircraft. Yeah, the, the numbers that Mark was showing and also the effort of creating a pool of experience 2500 hours within the project is in support of that. So this cost assessment is to the best of our knowledge in 10 years of dealing with electric flight and different technologies. So this is best effort forecast. Maybe it's worse, maybe it's better, but the ballpark figures are approximately in this field. Okay. Any additional question? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Alan Beck, uh, uh, recreational pilot. Tina, how many hours of uh, sunshine um, do you anticipate um, a, a country will need in order to sustain the charge level to operate on airplanes? So when we're talking about the infrastructure itself, um, the chargers are not too different in power requirements from what the automotive industry would be using. In fact, we are focusing around um, the electrical connections that are available anywhere throughout Europe and the US. So we do not require a specialized hookup for that. Uh, the speciality for the project actually is uh, island solar plants. So they are completely independent from the grid and it's not important to what kind of electrical connections you even have on the, on the airport. What Mark is trying to push is a completely self-sustained solution that works on its own regardless of where it is located in sto or installed. But I think the question was um, how many hours you need, but you would say that if you need more out there, the plant would be bigger, so that you have a sufficient energy for it. That's what I understand. Exactly, so the, the aeroplane can be equipped with various style charger. We have the overnight charger, which pretty much nobody wants. We have a charger that brings your aeroplane ready to fly it in around two hours. And we have the fast charger, which, which prepares the aeroplane ready to fly in 45 minutes. So basically, you have this aircraft there. You would have always, after one hour flying, you would have to have 45 minutes, minutes of recharge. Uh, that's what you would have two aircraft at every uh, facility, or it would be not Well, we will, we will start with uh, one aircraft at each facility. As I said, it is also important to have a network of chargers, and it's correct. One hour of flight will need 45 minutes to recharge the batteries. Um, regarding the size of the solar plant, as I mentioned in the presentation, it is depending on the location depending on daylight, hours of sunshine, and uh, it will be tailored to fit the need of the aircraft. Because I, I imagine that uh, when you have, for example, in winter time, you get less solar uh, input if you still want to do flight training. The, the, you mentioned the storage there. So storage would be, so you could fly how many hours out of the storage without recharge from the battery? for seeing how it also would work without sunshine in it. Approximately two hours in, from the storage. However, um, when you are familiar with solar plants, they are always also connected to the local grid. And in case really you don't have enough solar power, of course you can charge the aircraft out of the grid. Um, I would like to mention, I don't have it in the presentation, but the, um, let's say the daylight and also the irradiation corresponds pretty well with the flying season. So starting in March, more or less, and ending in October, this is also the time where, when you have the, the curve, it looks like that. In these months, it's really high radiation, and it gives a lot of energy, and in winter, of course, less, but I believe also less flying in winter. Yeah. 
Good morning. I'm Alois Peterle, uh, member of the European Parliament and uh, pilot as well. Uh, I'm pleased that electrifying uh, is not considered anymore a science fiction or a romantic issue, but is becoming a reality. Uh, and I agree with Eva and Tina that uh, electroflying uh, means a new paradigm. And I would like to tell you that uh, now we are approaching short final in our negotiations with the European Commission and the European Council uh, to define new rules and also new weight uh, uh, for ultralight uh, uh, and for electro-powered uh, planes. Uh, and I do hope that member states where there are still differences will join the European Commission and the European Parliament with their ambition to set a threshold at 600 uh, kilograms uh, kilos and uh, we have to convince some member states uh, to join the club uh, which believe in electro flying. I think that uh, electro flying is not just a, a commercial term or technological term it's also not a political slogan, but uh, it means, so 600 kilos means, uh, in my view, that Europe really, the European Union follows uh, its ecological innovation and other strategies. So I do hope that we will be successful in setting the right, the right threshold uh, for electroflight. Thank you. I have a question on this, perhaps, if you could mention the countries which we shall, should still need to push, because then we would need where the people would need where, uh, where we could, eat. I don't know if it's a political issue, but it would be interesting because perhaps could help, as we have a lot of people and we will broadcast this, so perhaps one or the other would uh, help. So, I would like to tell you that German, Germany is in the club already. And the Czech Republic proposed a new annex with uh, the right figures. But we have to convince Italy, Hungary, uh, some other, other, other bigger countries, I think Sweden as well. Uh, Slovak, Slovakia is with us, uh, Poland is with us, uh, Slovenia is there, of course. Uh, so, um, I don't know all the, the countries we still have to convince, but we need majority. Okay. Okay, thank you for this. Anybody else has a question? Yes. Okay, we are still in time. Uh, just a quick question. As a US pilot and a solar developer, I'm wondering what do you see as the biggest challenges to bring into the United States, a program like this? Maybe Michael Coates, who is also our US distributor, can uh, talk about this. Um, thank you. We have some really exciting developments happening in the US. Um, the legislation at the moment only allows for experimental flight, not LSA category. Fortunately, we've got the LSA category approved in Australia, so that's a great starting point. But in the US, our activities are uh, being taken up firstly by uh, government and, uh, and local authorities. So we can get exemptions in that situation to fly aircraft and use them for training um, without needing the LSA approvals, because the government doesn't need approvals to do anything in the US. It's not too premature for me to announce that we've got a, a system um, very much like what they're doing in, in the Swiss uh, country, going into California. Um, probably will get aircraft there within the next five to six months. It's a, uh, in the Central Valley, south of San Francisco, a network of four air aircraft, uh, four airports, all about 80, 80 miles apart, 60 to 80 miles apart, and the, uh, the use there will be for flight training, and they can leapfrog from one station to another. There'll be battery swap overs, fast charges. Um, that's been developed through the Cal Start program, which is basically the California government gives a proportion of their taxes back for green initiatives. Um, there was well over $10 million granted in this round. Um, most of it's gone to electric buses, but fortunately we've been funded for four uh, pipistrel aircraft, four brand new hangars, four uh, off-grid power stations, battery storage and so on. And uh, really exciting news, it's only come in the last three weeks 
is SpaceX through a, a convoluted network of, uh, of charities, trusts, not-for-profit organisations, has purchased two electric aircraft um, for, with the intention of training astronauts of the future because the US has a requirement for every astronaut to be a, 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 a private pilot's licence at minimum and uh, they're looking at selling rides into space for future astronauts, so part of that program is uh, we have to train them. And uh, they'll be putting an aircraft into California and also one into Detroit. And uh, that's looking to, to uh, deposits. Deposits have already been paid for that system. So as soon as we can get uh, deliveries, we expect hopefully to have two aircraft and a big ceremony happening at Oshkosh at the end of July. So um, it's, it's all very exciting and things are really progressing. Certification needs to catch up with electric aircraft in some countries. Um, but we're fortunate that some countries like Australia have, have already given the nod. Um, and we hope the US um, does so shortly and that'll, that'll pave the way for the future. Thank you, Mike. Um, okay. I think, yeah, we have a tight schedule here, so we're done. You know, the folks are from Pipistrel, and Mike will also be at the Pipistrel booth, either at the 1B or at the electric one in the A7. So thank you all for coming, thank you for the podium, and I think it's an exciting time. We have some more electric things coming, going on. We have the electric flight show uh, on, the, on Tuesday, there will be show flight show tomorrow with electric participation from 11 to 12. Um, then we will donate the uh, eFlight Expo award this afternoon which Ivo also won some time ago as he did won a lot of prizes for his electric aircraft. So it's, it's at four o'clock here, here at the stage and there are some more interesting uh, electric presentations going on. We have them in uh, our leaflet here, which is the eFlight Expo show guide, um, which, like I said, you can grab a German copy here, but you also can download an English or <coughs> Chinese copy uh, of the QR codes, which are down here. So thank you for coming, and hope you join the electric flying community. Thank you.